All right, now we need these students here, Jordan. They, we need the energy here. I mean, they've been t cheering for their sports teams all day here today, and now they want to keep that continuing here in the second half of basketball. Still one more half to play, and a lot can happen. But as we take a look at the statistics here from the opening half, when you look at these numbers, what stands out to you? The only thing that really stands out to me is the three-point shooting. Utah State kind of let Mississippi State linger in this basketball game because they weren't doing what they do, and that's knock down a three-point shot with precision. Well, they were able to get that going down the stretch towards the end of the first half. That really separated them in this basketball game. It's not a ma matter of can Mississippi State contest those three-point shots. It's will Mississippi State get back in transition to contest those shots. And Utah State's getting out and run, filling lanes, and energy is high for these guys right now. And the first half is really kind of a tale of two halves here for Utah State, especially for the three-point line. They were one of six in their first six attempts from beyond the arc, and then they were able to close things out, and that's helped them to this 41-28 right. advantage. Right, Preston Medlin, man. Yeah. He finally got going. You know, he's the main artery, main vein for which everything flows. Well, he got the guys going. They watched him stroke a couple threes. He got his teammates involved. Spencer Butterfield was a beneficiary of a couple of those dish outs for threes, and just like that, double-digit lead. When I play ball, Ray, it's how you finish the half is a lot of times how you start that next half. So the fact that Utah State really came out of the gate down the stretch there, I think they're going to come out of the gate here in the first half really strong. Jared Shaw, he started the opening half quickly for the Aggies. He finished the first half with nine points. But he has two fouls, as does Kyle Davis, to go along with four points. Jalen Moore doing a good job coming off the bench as well with seven for Utah State. On the other side for the Bulldogs from Mississippi State, they're led in the point department by Gavin Ware inside with eight points. Jacoby Davis coming in off the bench with five. Right, Gavin Ware simply has to get more touches. Four or seven from the field, he's been effective. Foul trouble, he's not in it with only one foul. So conditioning, we talked about how in the offseason he got into great shape, so it's not like the man's tired. Come on, guards so of the Bulldogs, gotta feed the big fella. So the Bulldogs will get the opening possession here to start the second half. Colin Borkert with it. Been very quiet in this game. Utah State showing man. And showing hard on ball screens. Help defense. Martin goes baseline, dishes it to Borkert. He scores his first two points. Good start for him here in the second half. Bloodman took that ball all the way in the teeth of the defense. Help side comes and the left Borker wide open underneath the rim, naked for the easy land. Closes the lead to 11. Pass inside. That's Kyle Davis. Mentioned he has two fouls. Spent a good bit of the first half on the bench. And they're tied up inside. Possession arrow goes here. They'll stay on this end with the Aggies. Yeah, Davis goes up, and that's rejection in its purest form right there from the big fellow Ware playing volleyball on the backboard with the athletic block shot. Out of bounds under right here. I think you might see screen the screener action, or it may simply be a double screen for Medlin coming off for a look. Nope, they just elect to get the ball in balance. Rowland throws it in to Kyle Davis. They say it went off his hand, so Bulldogs pick up the turnover. An uncharacteristic, unforced error from Utah State. A slow start here for Mississippi State. Get back in it. Porker. From deep, he's got it. NBA range, Colin Porker. He's got the first five points here in the first half, second half rather for the Bulldogs. He's the X factor for this Mississippi State Bulldog team offensively. He's the guy who stretches the defense, the most consistent shooter for three, but also the senior leader. You need that leadership on the road to Porker get these guys going. Coach Rick Ray told us another one of the leaders is on the bench and unavailable in this game. It looks like they're going to whistle Fred Thomas with a foul. And that player being IJ Reddy. And Reddy traveled with the team here to Logan, though he is nursing a sprained hamstring, not available in this game. But for a young freshman, he picks up a big leadership role for the Bulldogs. Yeah, Ray, that's a big deal because when you're on the road, you need leadership and you need those guys who are confident basketball players that can keep you calm in the eye of a storm. And they don't have that personnel. Worker has to be the sole guy right now to do so for this Bulldog basketball team. He started the second half here with a three-pointer from the corner and a nice shot inside as well. And it's going to be Tanel rolling. He drops a three and responds. And the lead back up to 11. Oh, and a feed inside of the back door. And Burkert unable to throw it down. 
A miss is not from Utah State. Mississippi State ran that same play earlier in the game and got an and one and almost got the exclamation point. Preston Metlin gets the shooter's bounce and it falls inside. Medlin is just so crafty and everything is so deliberate. Never seems like he's forcing the issue. Just bobs and weaves, maintains consistency in what he wants to do in a good field. Gavin Ware gets the feet inside. It gets around Jared Shaw for two. It's just that easy. And when you got a talent like that, you got to utilize it. This guy should get a touch every time down in a half court set. They're not doing it, but when they do, it's an easy two. Davis nowhere to go. Spencer Butterfield with it on the far side. Shaw sets the pick and the ball loose. Butterfield's able to chase it down with ease. And he turns it over. Sword, one man to beat in Roland the other end. It gets the reverse lay in as he gets past Tanel Roland for two. Active hands from Sword right there. Confuses Butterfield. He was trying to do too much with the basketball, Butterfield. And Sword makes a pay. Deflects the basketball, gets out in transition, and is able to finish. That's what they got to do, turn defense into offense. Can they do that more times than not to get back into this? Lead down the single digits. Rick Ray told us he wants the defense to hug those shooters. And a partial block right there from Fred Thomas. But inside, if Jared Shaw is able to grab a loose ball and score. Back the other way, it's Bloodman driving and scoring. It's just that quick for this Bulldog basketball team. They like to get out on misses, but they'll get out on makes, take that ball right out of the net. Before the blink of the eye, they get an easy dose. Rolling, shooting, scoring. Tanel Rowland getting the things going here in the second half. Okay, now we got some offense. Forget about the D. There's the offense for Utah State. Fred Thomas going baseline. He's going to be whistled with the push off. Preston Metlin there to put a foot on that baseline, and Fred Thomas trying to go through him. Whistled for the foul. Thomas comes up lame, but I think it was just simply knocking the knees. He'll dust that one off, and he should be fine. I'll probably limp off for a second, but I don't think it was a serious injury. I think it's one of those knee knocks. But a turnover right there because of the sublime defensive positioning from Preston Medlin. Yes, he can do it offensively, but this guy has a high basketball IQ, sliding active feet all the way, taking away that driving lane, and that's unselfish defense, meaning making a play, offering up your body for the better of the team, turning this Mississippi State basketball team over. Rock West Johnson heading over the scores table. He'll come in on the next whistle. On the it's going to be a timeout, maybe a timeout on the floor as Johnson will go ahead and check in. A back and forth start here to the second half. Utah State building their lead back to 11. Colin Borkert with a big three-pointer for the Bulldogs. Craig Sword on the lane at the other end as well. Back here with you from Logan, the Spectrum and the... Good crowd here tonight. Coach Morrill says that uh, the students come in droves. About 4,000 students regularly come into this arena here at the Spectrum. And they've got a season ticket base of about 6,000 people. So regularly 10,000 folks in this building. And why not? When you know more times than not when you come here to watch them play, they're going to come away with a victory. Yeah, Rain, it's no coincidence the teams that are so good at home also have the highest attendance in college basketball. It's not just this love affair with, oh, the fans help you win basketball games. Right, they really do help you win basketball games. And it's it's almost a disadvantage, not almost, it is a disadvantage for a team to come in on the road who hasn't been battle tested like this Mississippi State team to be overwhelmed by this crowd, this environment. That is an advantage for Utah State. Boy, it's some good scheduling also for the Aggies. You gotta tip your hat to them. They get USC to come into their building, Mississippi State to come into their building. Just one road game outside the state and non-conference play. And that of course is the game that they beat UC Santa Barbara as Craig Sword is able to tip in the miss there. So again, the Aggies with a good schedule here and able to take advantage of the home crowd. Absolutely. Now, interesting right there, Sword gets the offensive rebound. You take a look at the numbers right now. Utah State dominating the backboard. Coming in, Coach Rick Ray from Mississippi State said that would be a place where maybe Utah State had the advantage. Well, they're killing them. 25 to 13 on the backboard. Out rebounding by the offensive class, 9 to 3. That's been a factor in this basketball game as well. Jared Shaw misses from a step inside the three-point lane. Colin Broker is whistled for a subsequent re rebound. And he'll come out of the game, and Gavin Ware will check back in for the Dogs. A 
But again, the Aggies, as the inbounds comes into Marcel Davis, just one non-conference game outside the state of Utah. Play some of their in-state rivals on the road. But for the most part, by and large, they're in their home state, and a lot of it on their home floor. Last year, they started the season 14-1, thanks to the home court advantage they have here as well. Pass inside to Johnson. He can't get it to go down. Jalen Moore comes away with the rebound, and Preston Medlin almost lost it out of bounds. Hangs on to it. Will shoot floater, and he'll go to the line. That's just unacceptable transition defense from the Bulldogs. Preston Medlin, arguably the best offensive player on the floor. Take a look at the replay. Ball coming, ball coming. Who's going to pick him up? He finally gets picked up five feet away from the hoop. It's not good enough. He's able to draw the foul. A heady scorer like that, you have to have an awareness because he's going straight to the rim if he's not going to get picked up. You don't see that very often either. A miss from the free throw line for Medlin. Team is very, very good at the strike. Shot nearly 90% in that game at UC Santa Barbara. He's able to convert to the back end of the two free throw attempts, and the lead is back up to 10. 14 40 remaining here in the ball game. Sword looking to feed the low post, and Gavin Ware now backs into Shaw. He turns, and the ball is knocked out of bounds. Looks like they're going to whistle Shaw with the body. Oh, I question the call from the officials right there. One of my favorite pastimes, actually, questioning officials. <laughs> but right there, I thought it's good defense position. Yeah, that left arm you saw from Shaw has to be straight up. The arms have to be erect in the air. Right there, he kind of dug, caved in. And once the arm goes concave towards the offensive player, it is a violation. So as much as I want to argue with the officials right there, can't quite do it. Well, Gavin Ware is able to convert in the first free throw attempt. Take a look at some of his numbers this season. This is a young man that came to campus. I mean, he was pushing 300 pounds when he came to Starkville. And he's really dropped his weight down. I think he's put a playing weight as he makes a second free throw at about 262, right? Yeah, they said he shed 13 pounds in the offseason. He came in as a freshman at about 290. Loose ball out of bounds. Aggies turn it over. Well, here you go. We talked about, you know, what did Ware need to do in the offseason. They said, well, Rick Ray said he wants to run up and down the floor. When you got a big that's out of shape. He can't do that, so he challenged him. He said they wanted him to lose two pounds a week in the offseason. He did so, and you see the benefit right now. And right there, that's just a silly foul. And a frustration from Johnson right there. And out of bounds under it. He's not creating any advantage by throwing the forearm right there. Just a silly foul. You give up the basketball as you're trying to claw back into this basketball game. And that's going to be a teaching moment on the sidelines as Coach Rick Ray talks to Johnson. No reason to do it. That's what he's telling him right now. Absolutely nothing to gain from a foul like that except losing the basketball. Well, he'll have to go to the bench now. As the Aggies will try to push their lead here back to double digits. They lead it 51 to 43. Marcel Davis guarded by Jacoby Davis. Pass inside. Great look to Jalen Moore in the reverse lane. Beautiful offense right there. The defense follows the shooter in Butterfield. Jalen's left wide open. He slips the screen right underneath the rim for the high percentage lay-in. Sword driving and a whistle. Let's take another look at that one. Joel. Just a great read right there. It's an audible, if you will. They follow the shooter outside, and he just they call that a slip. Presents himself as a receiver wide open underneath because the defense is shifting to the three-point line, rightfully so, as well as his team shoots from three. But how easy of a bucket is that? It's a beautiful game when you play it well. Beautiful game. But they found a little bit of a soft spot on that right side. Medlin was the one, remember, on the break and transition drive to that same spot practically. The shot didn't go down. And speaking of going down, the ball is on the floor. Preston Medlin and the Aggies come away with it. Medlin with his head up, looking to pass the ball inside. That's Jordan Stone, and he's blocked, but he's going to be fouled and he'll go to the line. Let's see who they're going to get here. It's going to be either Craig Sword or Gray Applewhite. Looks like they're going to get Sword. Looks like they might get Sword. Good position right down low. Sword comes from behind. Smart foul. You don't want to give up the easy two. But it's interesting. When you watch the guard, Preston Medlin, who obviously is known as a sharpshooter, but in transition, if you look at his eyes, he's never looking down. He's always looking for somebody up ahead. He's always looking for that quick basket. He makes the guys around him better. Yes, he can shoot, but he also puts the guys in position to score the basketball. Jordan Stone right there just carved out space. A couple free throws. And the lead back to double figures. So the Aggies really starting to expand in this lead once again, but the Bulldogs don't go away. I mean, it's a testament to playing tough again. We talked about the environment here. They play in the SEC, and historically, 
Mississippi State, it's interesting. You go back through the statistics, they're one of the better road teams historically in the SEC. I believe they have the fourth best road winning percentage in the conference. Yeah, coach has tried to limit the turnovers. That's something he's really been on Craig Storm about his limit quite Craig Sword, excuse me, about his limiting those turnovers, and they've done that job, and that's what's kept them in this basketball game. Far side and the shot over the back of the iron from Trevante Blood. Here come the Aggies, Jalen Moore. This is going to be Danny Berger for three, and it's off the front of the rim. Comes down to Gavin Ware. Here's Bloodman pushing it back the other way for the dogs. They want to run. Holds it up. Fred Thomas for three. No good. Moore with the rebound. Back and forth. Go the Aggies and the Bulldogs. Trailing is Medlin on the break, and he's got the three. Preston Medlin with another three ball. Trailing in transition, gets the, gets the feet set, and Medlin is money from distance when he gets the feet set. Medlin is starting, he started in more than 55 games in his career here in Logan. And starting in another game tonight, you see why. Ludman tries to drive inside and dish it off to where. Let's see who they're, they're going to whistle here. Fouls on Marcel Davis, his first 13 foul. Say so Marcel Davis is going to pick up the foul inside for the Aggies. It's going to be his first foul. Now coming into the game, we're going to see for the first time, this is going to be JoJo McLaston. And the thought is there, give your 1,000-point scorer, your leader Preston Medlin, a breather for the home stretch. Because once he comes back in, he ain't coming out. Bloodman with a risky pass. It's tipped out of bounds, and Aggies get it on the turnover. Unforced errors right there. Those are the type of plays you simply cannot have when you're on the road. Simple inbound. They try to thread the needle. Miscommunication in a turnover. A veteran team takes full advantage of a turnover. What will the Aggies do here? Get our first look at JoJo McLaston. This is Berger driving with the left hand. He's going to draw the whistle. I think they might get Craig Sword here with another. What I like about this Agnes basketball team right now is, yes, they have a 15-point lead, but they're not burning clock. They're remaining aggressive offensively. They're maintaining their identity. What they do is they fill it up. They're an efficient offensive team, and they hunt their shot. With a 15-point lead, that does not change as Berger gets to the free-throw line, and we talked about his story earlier on. I mean, I just marvel at the fact that this guy his life was in question last year. Now he's at the free throw line playing competitive basketball, helping his team out. His free throw attempt is off the mark. Loose ball on the floor. I think we've seen Jordan Stone on the deck about three times in this game tonight. They're able to come away with it. Davis driving, and he's going to get fouled in the reach. And let's see who they're going to get here. All right, I think they might have got Dre Applewhite on the foul. We'll check that as we go to the break, though. How about Craig Sword with the tip in, Jalen Moore with the reverse for the Aggies, and the big guy, Preston Medlin, your 1,000-point scorer, dropping another three. The lead, 58-43, Aggies. Just under 12 minutes remaining here in this ball game. Utah State with a 15-point advantage over Mississippi State. The Aggies looking to improve their record to 4-0 for Mississippi State. They're also looking to do the same, but quite a hill to climb here as uh, time not on their side. Still a lot of basketball left to be played, but they need something to happen here in the second half to get the momentum back. They need something to happen, and Coach Rick Ray said he needs Fred Thomas to knock down some shots and give them some offense. Colin Bork Borkert has done done his thing. Gavin Ware has been incredibly efficient. He needs more touches, but it's glaring what Fred Thomas has given this Bulldogs basketball team. One of four from the field for a mere two points. He simply has to do more. And Utah State, you take a look at the numbers, they're about right on track with everything they do. 54% from the field, 42% from three. They're getting it done. This is Marcel Davis at the line. Missed the first of two. Able to make the second now a 16 point advantage here for the Aggies. Trevante Bloodman to Colin Borker. That's Dre Applewhite. Been very active in this ball game, trying to at least penetrate, make something happen. Now they're on him, man. Borker from distance. 
Off the back of the iron, Jordan Stone with the rebound. Unrelenting offensively. They go right back at you. Oh, Davis with a sweet move and a little spin off the glass. You reach, I teach, Ray Crawford. That's what we used to say when we were on the playgrounds playing ball. You sit back, we'll make you pay. A 10-0 run going now for the Aggies. They'll lead up to 18. Thomas for three. And no good off the front of the rim and out of bounds. And it's going to go to the Aggies. Your worst fears realized as a coach when you say one kid really has to step up for you to steal the road win. That being Fred Thomas, well, he's not giving you what you need. The beauty of what this Bulldogs team does is they throw a lot of different lineups at you, so a lot of kids get a chance to give you some production at that guard spot, but it's not Thomas's night tonight. Well, you can tell a little bit by the body language, too. He's sensing some frustration in this game. We mentioned the added weight that he put on in the offseason, and, and Rick Ray made no bones about it in his preseason talk to the media about this season, that he wants Fred Thomas to be not always a pass, first, shoot, second kind of player. He needs him to, as you mentioned a number of times, Jordan, in this game, be more of a scorer tonight. Just not quite getting it done in the box score, leaving it up to his teammates like Gavin Ware. That's a lot to put on one guy. Tell you what, man. I wish my coach when I was in college said shoot first. Are you kidding me? His sore shoulder been icing that bad boy. <laughs> hoist him. Yeah. He's encouraged him to be more part of the would have had to bench me, brother. I would have been on the bench for taking two minute shots. A couple of substitutions as Jordan Stone goes to the bench for the Aggies. And he's given him some valuable minutes tonight for Utah State. For three, it's Dre Applewhite, and he gets it to go from the corner, 61-46. That's been kind of the defensive game plan for Utah State. Make some of these guys who aren't known as shooters for the Bulldogs hurt you for three. Stay away from the ball screen by playing zone, and can they beat you from distance? They haven't been able to. A rare occasion right there, a three-point shot. Pass inside to Kyle Davis, and he loses the ball. Coming away with it is Applewhite. Sore, driving, the whistle, and shooting. No shot. It's going to be on the floor. Some confusion on who the foul is called on here. Now let's take a look at this one more time as he goes into traffic. Looks like they're going to get JoJo McGlaston maybe. It looked to be the last guy to make contact. However, sword. it's on the floor, which I kind of questioned that. It looked like it was in motion, in rhythm. And it should have been a shooting foul, but... Oh well, basketball like life, it goes on. Reach the midway point here in the second half. Michael White, it looks like he's going to be whistled with the push here. That's going to be where no. on the moving screen right there. Oh, okay, away from the basketball, yeah. Got to make yourself a tree, supplant so those feet when you're going to set that screen. Any shifting, any movement, it's a red flag for the officials. They're all over that court. Trying to pressure the basketball, they come away with the turn. Where? Ahead to Lewis, and ahead to Applewhite. And his layup is no good, but he draws the foul, so he's got an opportunity here to go. Mississippi State elected to extend the defense right there. A long, lengthy defense extending, and they push out. The Euro step is what they call that, arguably a trap. But we'll go ahead and call it the Euro step, and it looked like he drew the contact. An aggressive attack and approach to the rim. And can Applewhite get a couple from the free throw line? At this point, you got to knock down your free throws. And the first one is good. You mentioned that. You call it European stuff. I like that. Yeah. So, so in, it, it's not enough that these new rule changes make it easier for more offense. Now you got to let you a got, guy get a got European half rules a step. in the mix. Right. <laughs> talk about that and the, the big guys now in terms of the post players and Gavin Ware seems like a guy that is a traditional back to the basket where Jared Shaw in that European style could come out and square up and shoot. Yeah, yeah. That's so contrasting cool. styles a little yeah. bit for the big men here for the Adams and Bulldogs. And Spencer Butterfield's whistles for the push. They're not going to like it, but I agree with the foul. Apple White staying in right there. The arm bar, you see that from Butterfield, and then he follows through with that arm bar. you got to call that foul, and it's a reward for the solid defensive position from the guard from Mississippi State. 
Mansoor driving, stopping, shooting, and no good. Where with the rebound? And he's able to get the put there. I'll tell you what, the big body right there, that offseason work benefiting him. He's lost the fat, but he's increased the muscle. Right there, able to carve out some space, an extra put back right there for opportunity. Mississippi State not going away, Ray Crawford. They're hanging around in this game. If they can get Gavin Ware and somebody from the outside to kind of help out and go on a run here, this could be a game once again. Jared Shaw from the outside. His shot's no good. And it's Johnson who rips down the rebound. Craig Sort back the other way, driving right at Preston Metlin. What are they going to call here? A charging foul, it looks like. No, no, no. Is that what they're going to get? Yeah, they are. You're absolutely right. So they whistled Craig Sword, and from right here at this position, it did look like Preston Medlin had position. I just question if he was inside the ring right there. If he was, then it's not a charge. Well, it's going to be the Aggies who get the basketball, and I think they're going to get Dre Applewhite here for some hands on Butterfield. And at this point, you're probably going to see a few more fouls from Mississippi State because they have to push the envelope. They have to be more aggressive than they typically would be because they have to speed this game up so they got to get up in you and guard with the new rules and how ticky tack some of these defensive fouls will be called that you see utah state go to the free throw line and that's not good because the aggies are fantastic from the free throw line one of the better teams in the country this is where you take advantage and can expand that lead without time coming off the clock Butterfield on the road to make the second free throw attempt where rips down the rebound and back come the Bulldogs here 840 left to play Where tries to go to Johnson and it goes out of bounds. Let's see. They're gonna say nice touch by Butterfield That's by a good call. Aggies. Yeah, so it's gonna stay here for Mississippi State Terrible entry pass from where he got the bullet right there Butterfield trying to steal it and go and put it the basketball Fred Thomas back in the ball game, trying to get some offense generated here. He drives, dishes to where, puts the ball on the deck, up and in. This kid's a big time talent, Gavin Ware. Great touch around the rim, soft hands when he gets that thing. He doesn't waste any time, goes and attacks the rim. He's the guy you're going to be hearing about at the next level. He might not even finish his four years in Starfield. Medlin. This is what has shot no good. Shaw rebounds, and he's fouled, it looks like, on the way up, so he'll go to the line. And getting back to Gavin Ware, what's interesting you mentioned about the weight loss with him and what he's, the, the thing that's noticeable, seems very obvious, but quickness, agility on both the offensive and defensive end of the floor as we get another look. Explosiveness. But now you're seeing the other side of it, and as a team, a collective unit, the Aggies have really beat them up on the backboard. Fully won the time. It hasn't been one guy, it's been by committee. And a number of guys, Kyle Davis getting back in the ball game. An interesting, interesting story here is Jared Shaw is set to take another free throw attempt here. With Kyle Davis, a young man, number 23 here in the lineup right now for the Aggies. He started his collegiate career down the road. When we say down the road, it's quite a ways. But it's Southern Utah actually played in this building in a visiting uniform. His freshman year at Southern Utah took his Mormon mission. He hasn't played a game in two years, so this is his first action back the start of this season. Colin Borker drives. He can't get the runner to go, and it's Butterfield who comes away with the long rebound. Settle down the offense. Medlin stopping, shooting, and uh, such a rhythm basketball player. Always in control of his body. Never takes the bad shot. Will take some difficult ones, but well within his capabilities. Medlin's a heck of a player. Where with the turnaround, he gets the bounce. Basketball. Yeah, I'm telling you, they're just not going away, are they? It's like John Favreau in what was the movie Swingers? Just pesky, won't go away when he leaves the voicemail like 20 times. That pitiful moment, you just can't get rid of him. And that's what this Mississippi State Bulldog team is like. You just can't get rid of him. And a long rebound coming out to Thomas. Starting to see this game maybe wear a little bit. Gavin Ware and Colin Borker trailing. The basketball, Fred Thomas had to slow down, so I think maybe the second half probably started to catch up with these guys. Where has played vastly the majority of this ball game. Oh, man. Right there, a call on Ware said he pushed the defense out of bounds. He's winded. All right, so we've got a game here in Logan. Mississippi State will not go away. Dre Applewhite with a three from the corner, and the big fella, Gavin Ware, in the post as well. Aggies, though, up 66 54.
It's Rivalry Week on CampusInsiders.com. Check out the download with Bonnie Bernstein as we pit insiders from your favorite schools against one another. You can be a part of the fun Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific time. My good friend Jordan Cornett, myself, a part of the download. If you're just tuning in to CampusInsiders.com or the Mountain West Digital Network for the first time, Jordan and I are part of that program. It's a live online weekday offering. We get started at 1 o'clock Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Pacific. If it's happening in college basketball or football, we've got it covered. Yeah, we have a lot of fun too, Ray. I think for those viewers who aren't as quite familiar, it's an irreverent bunch. You know, we do a little bit. Oh, we got a wedding proposal here, huh? You think he went to Jared's? <laughs> Sorry, I had to get that joke in. I've always wanted to make that when I see those. I've always uh, wanted the broadcaster to say it. I got it in. You ever seen somebody say no? He better cut his hair. I bet, I bet the father-in-law is thinking he better cut his hair on the wedding day. Yeah. That mohawk ain't going to fly. She's going to get back to work. <laughs> and Oh, he's wiping the tears from his eyes. Oh, that's that's. Yeah, speaking that's of touching. mohawks, or faux hawks, it's the trend. Butterfield rocking one, too. He's able to hit his free throws here and extend this lead to... 68 to 54, 643 remaining here in the ball game. It's Borkert, and he gets the shot to go down from 15 feet as Orson Metlin was kind of chase in there at the last moment and get a block from behind. Borkert's able to convert, cuts the lead to 12. Defensively, the pressure picking up for the Bulldogs, trying to shorten the offensive possessions from Utah State, trying to hurry this game up. More possessions gives them a chance. But Jared Shaw turned around, jump shot won't fall. Ware comes away with the rebound. Blutman picks up the dribble, gives it over to Ware. This is Tyson Cunningham who checked into the game. And the reach in here by Kyle Davis is going to be whistled with a foul on Fred Thomas. Well, he's the quarterback for the top scoring team in America, and maybe your next Heisman Trophy winner. But who is Baylor's Bryce Petty this week on CampusInsiders.com? Bonnie Bernstein interviews. Bears, the Bears uh, quarterback on the download at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Money left on the table by the Bulldogs right there. Thomas just better illustrating the struggles he's had tonight. Can't get the free throw to go. You need every point you can get here down the stretch. And a fruitless effort from the free throw line. And Preston Metlin is going to be able to draw the foul here. I think Fred Thomas is going to be whistled again. We see a passionate conversation by Colin Walker and Gavin Ware inside as well as they're talking about the defensive strategy there. Probably on the switch-ups. I mean, it's it keeps you on your toes defensively, this Aggies team does. Yeah, they, they do. And when you're so good from the perimeter and everybody's a threat from the three-point line, that means the defense is going to come at you with a purpose trying to contest from the three-point line. Well, when they do, all these guys are equipped to put the ball on the deck and drive it. Medlin being probably the most superior at that, but he's been able to get to the free throw line. Is he having a night or what, Ray Cross? With 21 points, efficient from the field, he's doing it all. The best player probably on the floor is showing. Craig Swore drives, stops, shoots, and no good. Shaw comes away with the rebound. Medlin with his head up, pushing the basketball the other way for the Aggies. He's going to shoot from 16, and no good. Coming down with the rebound is Swore. Back the other way come the Bulldogs. Gavin Ware from deep. Long rebound comes out for Medlin. So now we're starting to see a little bit of desperation here with Mississippi State as the clock again working against them on the five to go. Now you see some motion offense, cross screen action, ball screen. Big Clifford for three, and it's a good. That's her 6-7 power forward. As we talked about how this team can stretch you out offensively, the bigs can shoot the ball from three just like anybody can, and it's a challenge defensively. Borker puts a shoulder down and drives past Clifford off the window for a pair. It's now a 15-point lead here for the Aggies as they're in no rush to get to the rim or get a shot off. 
You almost get the sense that Utah State, as good as they are offensively, they're simply tiring this Bulldog team out, trying to guard. Little baby hook there from Slim, a.k.a. Jared Shaw. But I think the challenge has just been wearing on the Bulldogs just defensively, that they're simply out of gas by the time they get to the offensive side of things. And now the brain is working slower. You're making errant passes. It's starting to collapse right now. And this one looks like they're going to stay perfect here at D. Glenn Smith Spectrum. Yeah. Orkert's pass goes out of bounds, but he also drains a three. And how about Ben Clifford coming in off the bench, dropping a triple as well? How do you guard that, Ray? Look at this. Jared Shaw on the sky hook. He can Shaw gets the bounce as well. Aggies on top. Boy, they get him started early here in Logan. Young Utah State fan. Plenty sure. to cheer about here in this game tonight as they lead Mississippi State. It's the most engaging, thought-provoking half hour in sports, and it's only on CampusInsiders.com. Check out the Seth Davis Show on Monday, December the 2nd. Seth's guest, Notre Dame coach Brian Kelly. Again, that's Monday, December the 2nd at 10.30 a.m. Pacific time. Seth really does a great job with that show. Those man. are fantastic, I mean. and they're on our YouTube channel. Um, and an archive there, and I tell you, they I learn something every time I watch Seth Davis and the Seth Davis show. It's and it's not Seth as stuff. you know him. I mean, he's talking to football coaches. Obviously, everybody knows him from the collegiate basketball side of things, but he's running the gamut. He's getting these guys to talk about things otherwise they wouldn't. It's fascinating stuff. All right, so more fast-paced defense on both ends of the floor here for Mississippi State coming out of that timeout. Craig Stewart off the turnover comes to the other end. And he scores two more for the Bulldogs here. A 15 point lead for the Aggies with three and a half to go. Look, to the Bulldogs' credit, they've been able to turn over Utah State more than they're accustomed to doing so. And that's what's kept them somewhat in this game. But Shaw showing what he did early on in this basketball game, exhibiting that perimeter touch and able to make you pay in a variety of ways. Yeah, that's a foul. Entry pass inside, intended there for Rockwes Johnson. And Shaw comes over the back and commits the foul. Overzealous with the hands. If you're gonna play behind the post entry, you can't force your hand over the top. You either front or you play behind and allow the catch. You can't do both. Shaw looks surprised, but come on, Slim. It's a foul, man. <laughs> so I said when we came in, I said they called Jared Shaw Slim. I gotta figure out why. And then we saw him at the shoot around. I said, okay. Skinny. You got it. You got Skinny. It. You should notice we took a look at the stats here during the last time out, and, and a number that just really kind of jumps off to me is the rebounding. Utah State out rebounding Mississippi State in this game, 38 to 21. Really, not a big surprise from what we have seen in this game. But when you see it in writing, you see how dominant they've been on the boards. Uh, it's been a very impressive performance for the Aggies in the class. Absolutely, I think we got to talk big picture now. Obviously, we're only four games into the season for this Utah State team, but fifth RPI. Yes, there's a lot of basketball to be played, but what I'm getting at is they've been battle-tested early on at USC, a USC win, a UC Santa Barbara team that's not an easy out, and they've performed, and the Stars have been the ones to do it. This team's going to be a factor. Well, Preston Medlin might be a little bit sore tomorrow. He picks up another charging foul. He's in that danger zone. But a lot of wreckage that happens down there underneath the rim, and he picks up With another With reckless abandon, a full head of steam, and he just offers his body up to the basketball gods. That's a textbook charge. And I talked about Coach Morrill's fundamentally sound style and how well coached his players are. That's a forgotten art in college basketball, the short-range jumper, which we've seen several of these guys make. But then taking the charge and off your bodies up, and I think somebody's just fouled out. Yeah, I think uh, that's going to be the end of the night for Rockwes Johnson. As he'll go have a seat, he fouls out of this ball game. And we're getting back talking to the about the Aggies. This is a team that uh, was a contender for the title and won so many of them in the WAC. They come in, they're a preseason pick to finish fifth in their first year in the Mountain West Conference. The difference is, I think, though, in the WAC was that you almost had to win the conference tournament to get a berth to the NCAA tournament. You look now at the Mountain West Conference, they're instantly in a conference with the number one RPI in terms of conference in the country as Butterfield hits another three-pointer. But they're in a position now that they could be an out-large. They're in a conference now where five teams could get into the tournament. Yeah, and it starts with winning games like this. Yes, you're supposed to win. You're the favorite. But to come out and do it like this, you got to handle games like this in November. And they're doing it. 
Now you just got to perform in conference. It's going to be exciting to see what they can do. And Borkert answers at the other end with a three of his own. Time to talk things over here. Still not out of not out of reach exactly for the Bulldogs. So very much still a game. A couple of substitutions running the scores table for Utah State. We'll see who's going to be in for Stu Morrill's team as his club leads by 15. The next, the next Mountain West basketball game on CampusInsiders.com. Mark your calendar for November the 30th at 1 o'clock Pacific time when the Colorado Buffaloes visit Colorado Springs to take on the Falcons of Air Force exclusively on the Mountain West Digital Network powered by Campus Insiders. Yours truly, Ray Crawford and Jordan Cornette on a call once more for that one. We'll be there. Looking forward to it. It'll be a fun uh, holiday week. Thanksgiving coming up this week, of course, as we all know. We want to, from all of us at CampusInsiders.com, as well as the Mountain West Digital Network, want to wish you and yours a happy Thanksgiving coming up this week. I'll tell you what Coach Morrow's given credit and thanks for is having these three, the three-headed monsters, Spencer Butterfield, Jared, Jared Shaw, and Preston Medlin. The stars have come out tonight. That's what's propelled them to this 15-point lead. And he's still got Medlin in the ball game. And he's gone down his bench here. And it's been a pretty deep opportunity here for Utah State. Very capable. This is a very capable team. As you look down through their roster, guys in the game right now like Jordan Stone, Ben Clifford hit a three-pointer in this game tonight. Tenail Rowland kind of running the offense at point times at the point guard position. Jalen Moore has contributed with some points and some rebounds in this game as well. Yeah, it's been a balanced attack, and that's one of the things that makes this Utah State team, again, such a threat. Is it can be any, it can be anybody on any, any given night. A lot of people talk about Jerry Chaw there. You got to lay out for that a round of applause for Preston Medlin. He's consistently been the guy no matter what, but a lot of people key in, in the interior on a guy like Jared Shaw, but they have a very capable roster, and they go about seven or eight deep that can really produce offensively. They've gotten better defensively, too. That's been the knock on this Aggies basketball team over the years is they can't really defend and they struggle to rebound. And Gavin Ware battling inside, draws the foul, so he will go to the line. And we'll take another look. In the low post, the big fella. Fouled himself. No foul there. Well, uh, the crowd's section. going crazy. I love it. <laughs> They're really giving him a hard time at that end of the floor. As he misses the first free throw. Tanail Rowland going out of the game. Looks like Sean Harris is going to check into this ball game. And Vico Nomiaya is also into the game as well. And we got to get a shot of Sean Harris as he comes into the game. Check out the do. Looking good, man. The He's old, got it going the right way. I'm going to take you back here. The old kid and play look. Do you remember I'm that? telling you. I do. I remember that. Do I remember that? <laughs> <laughs> Love those guys. I tell you, man. Ray, you are one cool dude, man. Hey. Can't put anything on this guy. I got to keep up with you and Shay and Tim Doyle and all the crew back at the shop at Campus Insiders. Absolutely, man. And going back to that, yeah, we have a lot of fun over at CampusInsiders.com. you got to check out the show. It's not your typical sports center, ESPN.com kind of stuff. We take a look at things that are of interest in the college football world, but also hard-hitting stuff that you can't really find just anywhere. Just like JoJo McClaston for three. I would imagine that's pretty fun, too, when he dropped a triple in front of the home crowd. If it feels good, do it again. The Aggies have been from distance. Borker. His shot from three-point land off the mark. This is McClaston bringing it right in front of our position here. The broadcast booth. Sean Harris gets the feed from Jalen Moore. His shot won't go, but... Uh, Goes off the top of the backboard. He's kind of laughing. He's got a smile on his face. You can tell he's a crowd favorite as they get excited for him every time he gets a touch. Yeah, the fans Looking love like, it. Looking like a little Ray Crawford out there on the layup. Well, <laughs> I, I just he couldn't, didn't quite have that vertical. The result's about the same. <laughs> There's some contact there. The officials elect to go with the no call as this one's pretty much in hand as Utah State will remain perfect at home. Good for three. That one's off the mark. Rebound comes down to Harris, so he'll get in the book with a rebound. Now as he 
seconds wind down here. The Bulldogs content here just to play straight up defensively in these final seconds of the game. The last of drives with the left hand. Nice move. Jojo McLaughlin showing me something, Jordan. Yeah, man, he's got he's known for his bounce. He can really get up. He's got a couple of YouTube videos they tell me you need to check out. Apparently, he's a high flyer, an extra step on his ladder. <laughs> Listen to that chant. <laughs> I love this place. I could come back here and do a game every week if they'd allow me. This is everything, Ray. It's right about college basketball. A true six man. Great people here in Logan, Utah, and a great product they put out on the floor, man. Winning basketball, great environment, tradition of success, and Utah State puts another W in the book as they improve to 4 0 for the first time since 2008. Winners 87 to 68 is our final score in this one here from the Spectrum in Logan, Utah. So kind of back to the drawing board here for Rick Ray. They'll fly back to Starkville here tonight. Some positive things that they can take away from this game, but still the things that concerned him in terms of offensive production from people outside of Gavin Ware, that's still something they'll need to work on. Absolutely, and he's a sharp guy, Coach Rick Ray, and he's the man in the face of this program and what they're trying to do. He's got a young ball club. This is their first true test. It's always difficult when it's on the road in an environment like this, but they'll learn from this. They'll grow. They'll have some big-time performances in that power conference in the SEC, and they'll be a team. This is going to be a good RPI win at the end of the day for this Utah State ball club. Once again, the final score, 87-68. to 68. Another big, impressive game from Preston Medlin as he catches fire in the second half of the first half and then rolls through the second half as well. For my partner, Jordan Cornett, I'm Ray Crawford. Thanks so much for watching. This has been an exclusive presentation of the Mountain West Digital Network powered by Campus Insiders. Again, your final score tonight from Logan, Utah. It's Utah State 87, Mississippi State 68. Good night from the Spectrum.